Hello and good morning. Good morning. Diane Hunter here. How are you doing today, Miss Diane? Excellent. Is this Arrow? That would be me, at least the last time I checked. Yeah, yeah, it's still me. <laughs> Man, Fantastic. Con congratulations on your book. Oh, great. Another vampire book. This, this book is, I, I can't put it down. Fantastic. Wow, that makes me so happy. You just made my day. So, to but to put that kind of energy into a page, where does it start from and, and how is it that you, because, I mean, you're like the, the director, you're, you're the producer, you're the one that invites the characters. Did, did you grab the right character for it? I mean, you're in charge of what we're about ready to put inside our head. That's right. I am the auteur, as they would say in film. Are we recording now? Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Usually I get a prompt, but that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, one of the things I've, I've learned about having conversations is that like, if you met somebody on the street, you, um, you know, you, you just, you just start having a talk. And so that's always been my, my fun thing about, I like Mark Maron was in the studio. We were in there for 45 minutes. He goes, are we ever going to get started? I, Dude, we've already been started. So it's, it's, it's just fun stuff. I love Mark Maron, and I've heard that uh, Joe Rogan, when people come in, he prefers to not speak to them when they come in. He mm -hmm. likes to just get started so that they don't waste any wonderful conversation. Yeah, that's that. That's one of the things that I picked up in radio. We used to do a thing called Save It for the Air, that when we would go to break, we none of us would talk to and it, it, while we were, Although we were in the room together, we, we, we wouldn't talk because we were so afraid that we'd come up with something and waste all that energy in, in no man's land. That's really interesting to hear. Yeah, I've always wondered how that worked with radio. I love radio. I love media. That's why I wrote this book. It's largely about the media, as you're aware, because <laughs> I, I wrote it to see how media would react to something crazy happening, like there being a new god and there actually being vampires. And that was really a response to, in 2019, I, I sat down to write it when I noticed there was an uptick in the cultural divide mm -hmm. playing out on the news and in social media. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to write a book with the world that we're living in now reacting to something crazy like that happening. And, and it's not just any God. This is a teen God, which I thought was very fascinating that, that, that you grew in that direction. She's uh, an attractive, blonde 19-year-old. You know, I, I guess I kind of had uh, Jennifer Lawrence in mind when really? I was writing it. I could see that. I could see that. But, but... Which is funny because she recently insulted Tucker Carlson. Did you hear about that? No. What happened? She said something like he haunts her nightmares or whatever, which is funny because, as you might know, I wrote that scene with Tucker Carlson. And I thought, oh, well, there's my casting. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Netflix to give me a call. <laughs> does he know Does he know that, that you did that or is it something that's going to happen? Does Tucker know? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not a large enough author yet for him to have any reaction to it, although I did write a blog about it. I write blogs about uh, the topics in my book on my website, dianehunterauthor.com. I, and I, I, wrote a, I wrote a blog about the uh, Tucker scene because that was one of my favorite scenes to write. I'm glad that you, you, you brought up blogging because that, that seems to be that one thing that everybody once did, but we need to continue doing it because it's communications and it's not just words that are flying by through a speaker, but rather they're right there in front of us. And I love reading blogs because I do get to study what, what's being thought out. It does seem pretty old school, though, doesn't it, at mm -hmm. this point, blogs? However, it's relevant because it's kind of like creating your own uh, media, your, your own magazine or something. I'm shocked that you're not into podcasting yet because you are creative with the word. Well, I have done some podcasts, but I've never actually conducted one. But I would love it. You know, I have a, I have a great face for radio, and <laughs> I'm willing to get started if anyone wants to help me out with that. Who is D.A. McQuinn? compared to Diane Hunter? Are you one and the same? Pretty much one and the same. Yeah. So when I first started publishing books, I have a sci-fi series and I have a collection of short stories under another name, D.A. McQuinn. That's M-A-C-Q-U-I-N for anyone listening. And when I wrote this new series for Oh Great, another vampire book, um, I wanted to go in a completely different direction with satire. And so I wanted to differentiate differentiate what I'm doing now with the previous work. So what I've done is I've started a new series. The Vampire One is book one. Uh, coming up next is probably, oh, great, another book about Jesus. So essentially, <laughs> I just want to take on different genres. You know, maybe, oh, great, another superhero book. Because the ideas never end. There's too many things to write about when it comes to satire and it's it's a lot of fun so that's what i'm doing now is really focusing on this new series the oh great series
It's interesting that you talk about it, you know the, the the ideas are always there because I have I host a podcast that's, that's called Creativity the Addiction and it's so true that people that that really tap into their creative energy it it's never ending there's the, the supply is always there you just got to go get it. And I think that's why I'm fundamentally a happy person because I'm always excited about things I'm going to write and I never know where it's going to go. It's almost like time travel, you know, I sit down at a coffee shop to write, who knows? where it's going to end up. And with this book, Oh Great, Another Vampire Book, the vampires in it um, are vehicles to write about history. Mm -hmm. So I have one vampire who was from the Carpathian Mountains when so-called Dracula was alive. And then I have another vampire who was alive during the golden age of Athenian philosophy, who was friends with Epicurus. So I get to just jump all over the place, and it's so much fun. Well, when Roman McClary meets Sarah, things begin to change for Mr. Roman. That is correct, yeah. All of a sudden, he becomes less forlorn in his life of long life of seeing cyclical human <laughs> folly over the course of hundreds of years. Yeah, Roman McClary, he's a, a, a vampire who was sired during the Revolutionary War. Yep. And I live outside of Boston, so I really love the history around here. So as, that was great to include that in. As that writer, do you walk around with a pen in your hand just, just to feel the vibration to find out who's speaking to you? put it this way i as a woman i carry a purse and i never have my i never have uh i never not have a pencil and a little pad of paper because mm -hmm. you never know when i'm going to get an idea so true so true i've always always envisioned russell crowe in a beautiful mind that as we're walking down any path there's about five people standing right there next to you waiting to be heard really i, I always imagined him in gladiator because he was oh, really God. hot in a uh, centurion outfit <laughs> Well, he's not a centurion, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> so with, with Sarah wanting world peace, do you think readers right now are going to sit there and tap into her energy in the way that she goes, yeah, I'd like to have some of that too, because right now it seems to be a reckless little joint right now. Yeah, I think that she's a very relevant character, and I really think of this book as a book of our times because she's someone who wants to make a better world. She wants there to be sustainability. She wants there to be free energy. And these are things that a lot of people are talking about now, and hopefully we're moving in that direction especially when it comes to getting off of fossil fuels and lower carbon emissions, mm -hmm. which is another thing she talks about in terms of science, and also mapping out human DNA. Uh, I think that she's really on point when it comes to trying to make the world a better place in terms of it being more equitable. But the fun part was writing a character who, when she goes about these things, might be a little too authoritarian. So that's where you get into <laughs> the fun, slippery slope of yep. moral ambiguity there. The book we're talking about is, oh, great, another vampire book. Uh, in, inside these pages, the, what I love is, the, is like you said, the satire. Uh, so many comedians that I've, I've been blessed to talk with always talk about crafting the joke. Your, your jokes are so natural in this, or the, or the satire. Did you have to craft the paragraphs, keep going back, keep going back, and test it out on people, or how did you do that? No, they just occurred to me. So you, you know, are naturally funny like then. just kind of off the cuff. Well, perhaps. I don't know. I, I do love comedy. I have done a little bit of stand-up, uh, mainly just open mics. And, you know, I've been booked for a few gigs in Boston. That was before the pandemic. And so, you know, I love comedy. You know, people like Woody Allen, Mel Brooks, Judd Apatow. So it's kind of like in my blood, I think, to uh, kind of like walk around and make fun of things i was voted class clown so you know i'm a very silly person well you're perfect for radio i see the one, one thing i think I, what i would love about just listening to your voice is that you would be that 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 talent on the radio that wouldn't be an a giggle chick if you know what i mean in other words so many times in radio the girls were only there just to laugh but you seem to be the one that would be no i'm not going to be that girl i'm going to create the laugh well thank you that's a great compliment there's a Sephora not even four miles from where I presently stand. You know I got to go in there and see if there's any vampires shopping for makeup. That's because everyone knows vampires sparkle. So they have to buy makeup <laughs> so that they can operate in reality. So that that's a little convention that I stole from Twilight. Yeah, Stephen I was going to ask you that. I was. Gonna... <laughs> of course I make fun of Twilight a little bit. It's kind of hard not to. So do you turn this into an animation or, or something that's going to be on Netflix? Because th there is so much where you could turn this into a 12-part episode uh, on Netflix or Hulu. Well, if you have any connections, feel free to keep in touch because that, <laughs> that would be amazing for this to be a film or a show on Netflix or a movie on Netflix. They do a lot of good stuff. How do you come up with the characters in the way that my, my first book, what I did was I would cut out pictures from the National Enquirer and say, okay, you're going to be this character. You're going to be this character. Okay. And because when you've got an ancient Greek with an eating disorder and, and a shepherd with a fake Southern accent, it's like, how the hell did she even think of this? 
Well, I mentioned earlier, I'm quite silly. I think my brain is just kind of all over the place, yeah. especially if I drink a bunch of coffee. You know, I just like write stuff that I think cracks me up and hopefully I make other people laugh too. But that's the one hard thing about being a writer for me is that I do spend so much time alone. So it really helps to have um, a beta reader, you know, to let me know what works and what doesn't. Kind of like how stand-up comedians go up on the stage and they want to see what works and what doesn't until they hone their act. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So do you have a writing space, a writing place where you go and, and you, you, can, you can vent out, but you also spoke about being out in public and writing and stuff like that, but you still have to have that one place where you connect. Actually, it's not so much a one place as it is a state, and that is Ooh. not bothered. <laughs> I can't have people around me. You know, I wrote uh, Oh Great, Another Vampire Book, mainly at Starbucks, just because it was convenient. Mm -hmm. And so I put on headphones. No one bothers me. It's great. That's really the main thing. I have to like, get into my own head. I tell you the reason why I laugh at that is because being in radio and being the production director for iHeartRadio, uh, the thing is, is that people would just walk in. And I finally looked at someone and said, would you walk in on me if I was in the bathroom? No. Then why are you doing it here? Think of this. I am dumping right now. I'm dumping all of my creative energy into this computer. Yeah, it's really important to not be interrupted. And, you know, a lot of people that work in programming, I've heard they really get into the zone. And if someone walks in and asks a question, you kind of, you know, you get discombobulated a bit. Something that's still on my mind, you talked about your next book could be, oh great, another book about Jesus. And I, I was going to ask you about that in the way that one of my last books w was Conversation with the Devil. And pe people sit there and they, they, they right away they judge the book by its cover. And it's like, man, you have no idea. Your book is going to be the same way, right? Where it's going to be, you, you've got to get into the pages. Don't judge the book. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just kind of trying following in that tradition of other people who have written books about Jesus, such as, um, you know, Nikos Katsanzakis, The Last Temptation of Christ. Yeah. That's probably the most well-known one because they made a Hollywood movie out of it. I think Harvey Keitel might have been in it. So it was kind of like Mean Streets, but in Jerusalem. I remember when that movie was, I mean, everybody wanted to ban it. And then I finally found it at like a blockbuster video. And I said, oh, my God, I look around going, is anybody going to watch me as I go rent this movie? Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Um, I haven't read the book, though, to be honest. But, yeah, I wanted to write a story about Jesus where everything you know about Jesus is true. He was born of a virgin. He did die, and he did rise up three days later. But when he does rise up, he doesn't ascend. He just has to go back to work. <laughs> God. <laughs> So true. So true. <laughs> it's so like, that's, you know, it's a, it's a travel story, essentially. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like I've heard people say, and the, the one thing about the human being is that they're remembering Jesus for the, the worst day of his life. And, you know, it's like, come on, come on. <laughs> the worst day. <laughs> wow. So I, I love where your heart is. I love the way you write. And, and you know, it's, it's just amazing the way that you can put your words in, in a forward motion kind of way. Do, what, where does that originally come from? Spending lots of time alone, it's just my personality, you yeah. know, just writing stuff to make myself laugh, reading, writing things that I think I would like to read and that emulate people that I admire, mainly Mel Brooks. Yeah. I would give anything to meet him. He's probably one of my favorite humans. Oh, my God. We, when they did Missouri Breaks uh, up in Montana, I mean, it was it just blew me away that his energy was right there. And then and then to um, to to be there with Marlon Brando, I went up and knocked on his door. And when it was there at the War Bonnet Inn and he goes, what? And that's all he said to me. What? And I, and I took off. I, I couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle no, all four, five foot four of him. Yeah, that, <laughs> but it, it was like you're sitting there and you're going, this is not a movie. The, the dude is like right there. And, and I just I was like, I got to get out of here. And, uh, you know, because I was a kid. That's really interesting. Wow, I can't believe you met him. So the who, who have you met? I mean, because I mean that because, it, you know, I know that you would like to meet Mel Brooks one time. Right. Um, well, I haven't met anyone too famous. Like, oh, I met Hunter S. Thompson. I should oh say my that. God! Yeah, I met him. He was outside of the Strand Bookstore in New York City. I used to work there for a stint back in the early 2000s. He drove up in a limo with his girlfriend because she wanted to go shopping. But while she was shopping, he let me sit in his limo with him. Shut up! What What was that like? It was weird. He's uh, kind of exactly what you would think he's like. You know, he's like wearing shorts. <laughs> it's it's wintertime. He's wearing shorts. Oh, my God. All right. Where can listeners go and find out more about you, Diane Hunter, and, and give you some love, man, to buy the books and all that kind of stuff and really inspire you to continue growing with this project? 
Oh, thanks. Um, my website, dianehunterauthor.com. There you can find links to buy, information about me, and blog topics that uh, inspire the book. And that's where you can find everything. I love it. I love it. I'm looking forward to you starting your own podcast because I you you've got it. You've got you've got the attitude and the, and the voice and everything. <laughs> Thanks so much. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today? Okay. Likewise. Thanks for having me.